everyone, this is Sarah with Soiled Plant and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about bugs, in particular beneficial insects. I've been toying with the idea of getting beneficial insects for a few months, but I never pulled the trigger on it until now. What happened was I was on Facebook and a local plant group, somebody posted that, hey, I'm buying beneficial insects. If anyone else wants to kind of get in on the deal, let me know. I reached out to them and they basically told me the lowdown, this is what they're ordering, would you like some? And I said, sure, I bought them, they're here, and I'll tell you what I got. I have had an ongoing problem with spider mites where they keep kind of popping up here and there. I've kept them at bay for the most part, I've lost a handful of plants, but I haven't found that secret to like truly, truly killing them. And while I don't think that beneficial insects are the way to truly kill them if you have a strong infection, I do think that this is a very good maintenance thing where I can kind of keep them low and continue my treatments in between getting beneficial insects and hopefully kind of like nip them in the bud before they have a chance to grow, hatch legs, all of those things. After all, I am just a girl standing in front of her plants asking them not to die. As are we all, right? I'm here for the relatable content printed on a shirt, I guess. So while I am the farthest thing from an expert on beneficial insects, I do want to tell you sort of what I got and how they're used and sort of the history behind them because I'm kind of learning at this point. I have them and they're here, but they've been here for like a day. So <laughs> I don't know how effective they are or anything like that. So I can't speak to anything like that, but I will tell you sort of what the website says about these particular bugs. And I figure this is a good thing to kind of learn together. So the name of the bug is Ambelisus cumaris. I am probably butchering that, but that is how it's kind of phonetically spelt. This particular bug is the best at dealing with thrips and spider mites, according to the website. The optimal environment is 43 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and 65 to 75% humidity. My house is definitely in that range for the temperature. Humidity is a little bit harder though. My ambient space in sort of the living areas is generally like 30 to 40% humidity, especially in the winter right now. And in my Millsbow cabinets where I have the majority of these beneficial insects, it can reach a little bit higher than that, especially right after watering day. So I'm hoping that the humidity doesn't play too much into making these effective or not, but that's at least what the website says. And generally speaking, they say hang a sachet for every three square feet, best known for its control of immature western flower thrips, onion thrips, bean thrips, and other thrips. And they also work well to control two spotted spider mites, salamon mites, broad mites, rust mites, bamboo mites, strawberry mites, white fly, bacillids, and aphids. So this particular bug feeds on immature stages of thrips, certain mites, and pollen. So the bugs come in these little pouches, also known as sachets, and each sachet has a little nest in here, and then they leave their home to get food, and then they come back, right? So this is like their little home base, their beehive, if you will. And on either side of the sachet, there is a little hole so that it's kind of like their front door and back door, they've got one on either side. And what you do with these sachets is you basically hang them on a plant. Like they said, it, one sachet will cover about a three foot square. And since putting these out yesterday, I haven't seen the bugs. I haven't really been looking either. And supposedly these are really, really small and you kind of have to search for them in order to see them. They're not gonna be like lace wings where you see them everywhere. So each of those sachets contains a thousand cumaris predatory mites and a food source. The bags are designed to be breeding habitats and are hung on plants. Over four weeks, each bag can produce over a thousand predators. Slow release hanging sachets are a great option for preventative maintenance to guard against mites or thrips. Simply hang every four weeks and these hatchling bags will breed your own natural enemies. Because a group of people on Facebook decided to order them, I could order kind of as few as I needed. So I decided to experiment by ordering eight of those individual sachets and putting them around the house. I have strategically placed them in certain areas of the house, so not every single plant in my house is going to get the benefits of these insects. I did put two in each of my Millsbow cabinets, sort of one on top, one on bottom. Then I have a banquet table with a couple of my rare plants, and those have been getting a lot of floral nectaries, which is usually bug-related, so I did put two sachets on either side of that banquet table and then I decided to put two in other random places 
one on my Plaminii, which also gets spider mites quite a lot, and then on my Calathea Worskoweskii. I do think that this will be a little bit of an interesting experiment because it'll be kind of hard to prove if they work or not because this is a preventative maintenance. It's not meant for if you have an active outbreak. So it's going to be a little difficult to tell whether it works or not, but I figure because this could be split up with multiple people, it makes it a little bit easier to assume the risk. I don't know if I'd be willing to sort of jump on getting you know, 50 of these sachets if I didn't need them. This way I could try a few without breaking the bank or ordering more than I need. So it's really nice and I think I'll continue to do it for a little while, even if I don't see immediate effects. But I did want to let you know that this is what I'm doing. I am new to this, so I wanted to let you know that I was trying this. It's definitely an interesting concept, the idea of buying bugs to eat your other bugs that aren't as good. I've seen people talk about this as a good solution, so I'm willing to try it. It wasn't that expensive. Because I was able to buy, you know, just eight sachets at a time, it was like $6. So it was not expensive at all, but you know, that's because I was able to split it with other people. One of my Facebook friends in this little planty group, I did ask her, you know, advice how many she buys for what areas and all that kind of stuff. She did say that the bugs were like really really tiny and it was hard to see them and it was the only type of bug that she could get that her fiance would allow and I'm glad I live alone so I don't have to run that by anybody else but I did warn the boyfriend. He's skeptical but supportive so I'll take it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think of all this down below. Like the video if you want to encourage me to buy more beneficial insects or if you think this will solve anything at all. Give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you next time. Bye!